This is Family Liquid Ghost, and we're live on our Facebook channel with Fuzz Love Band, and you guys are from uh, the Chicago area, right? Yep. yep, yep. And you guys got a brand new record, just came out, Countless Wasted Days. We talked to you like a year ago, maybe even more, uh, when you guys were working toward this. I know you were running like a campaign to get the second album out, and now it's out. It's on Bandcamp. I've, I've listened to it on YouTube. And we're gonna we're gonna actually talk about it today um, with all, all your fans. So like it must feel good that you actually got the project done. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I mean, since the beginning of all the pandemic stuff, you know, we've been planning fast for like a couple years. Yeah. Yeah. But it feels really really good. Really good. Really good. Really good. Have it done. 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 Have it what I wanted to do is I actually have a YouTube, um, the YouTube version of the album. I wanted to play like one track um, and then maybe we'll talk about it. Maybe we'll go through some of the tracks, but maybe so so the fans can get an intro to your work. If that is that cool? Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to seg over there. You can probably see that you can see it's coming up on the screen. And then I'm going to I'm going to mute you guys and I'm going to play like the first track and then uh, we'll cut back. Now I 
Oh. Here, here you go. I'm back. <laughs> so that was Caterpillar, and you actually um, referenced the countless wasted days in that song, in the lyrics, and that's pretty cool. So that's how it was good to open with that, because that kind of fits with the title. Um, I really like what you guys are doing, because, you know, we've talked about this before. Like, I'm a big fan of progressive rock, a big fan, you know, in jazz outfits like Sun Ra and uh, Parlor and Funkadelic. And I just, I really enjoy the fact that you've got this kind of Chicago, you know, horn section going on. And you've got, you know, the, the longer than normal form in this day and age of the Spotify playlist. Uh, it's really, I really appreciate what you guys did with this song. It's really cool. You guys are a little bit light on the mic. Maybe you can get a little closer. I don't know if your mic's up. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Wanted, wanted, uh, the album. The album. Yeah, it's, it's a really great track. I mean, um, I know you guys, how long did it take you to like do that song? Um, that was actually, that was actually one, of the, one of the first songs from that, from that that's cool so that was actually one of the an older song that you you were able to you didn't get on the first record and you got onto this record did you actually refine it more from the original version Yeah, if you're fading a little bit, maybe you gotta get closer again. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, sorry about that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. You have visions made to it over the last years to kind of kind of kind of get what you want. Yeah. 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 Ye
because it wasn't really a major issue that's kind of what made us so um but as, but as far as there's there's a bunch of challenges we get we get to know and know and do what we do what we need to do. We just kept we just kept rehearsing the whole band the whole time. Yeah, a lot of yeah, a lot of lessons. You know, I mean if I mean if anything Yeah. So, I mean, that's awesome that you guys took that. I mean, I've, I've been talking to a bunch of bands, you know, during this whole COVID thing. It's actually kind of doubled down on podcasting and started branching out to this new video mode. Uh, and a lot of bands have actually taken this time because they can't tour to really focus on writing um, and focus on recording. So is that, is that kind of like, that's kind of really, because you can't really do shows unless you do live streaming and, some bands have a hard time figuring out how to get that to work. So is it better that you take all your energy and actually focus on, on, on writing a, a project or putting a project together? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's probably, you know, it's just, I, I've, I've kind of doubled down on that on myself, you know, I'm in my recording studio, you can see, you know, maybe a little bit, but um, yeah, it just, I think everybody has just tried to focus, and I've talked to some people that actually went and learned new instruments, learned how to do more production, but did you guys, like, did you you actually did this in a, in a, in a studio or your own home studio, or you actually went to a, a physical studio to do it? Yeah. I think it's um it's always good to let a studio, you know, a recording engineer handle their work, you know, and producers help you like craft it. But you guys that pretty much have the song structures uh, pretty much handled, right? Or do you let producers kind of re um, like uh, focus what you're doing? Do you, do you ever have a situation where your producer actually really changes your original idea, or do you just have do they just enhance what you do, what what you wrote? We don't have to do everything ourselves. We don't have to do everything ourselves. That's cool. Uh, John, Lee, Lee, Mr. Guitar Player, really, 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 uh, so, uh, so yeah, that's like we kind of figured kind of everything, figured everything, everything out, out before we were rehearsing the whole album. Yeah, we pretty much pretty much played these songs like the last. Yeah, so that's why they're so tight. You know, you know. Hopefully, hopefully, well, the next. Oh yeah, it's very tight. I mean, it what feels really cool because it feels like you guys. I don't know if this is true, but it feels like you recorded it like as a band, not like yeah, yeah. It's, it doesn't feel like it's overdubbed. It feels like it's actually kind of old school, like when you had, you know, like the Almonds come in or, you know, Clapton with the Derek and the Dominoes. A lot of those tracks were recorded live and then maybe they overdubbed stuff, but the bands actually were recorded playing and then they had to go back and track it again, you know, play it again. Maybe they punched in, punch out, but a lot of times they recorded fully as a band, which I think is one of the more organic. And I like the way it sounds when, you know, the completed product, that song, 
is there something about doing it that way that you can't get uh, if you just you know do something you know <laughs> on the door <laughs> um, no, you just no, I, I agree. Um, um, and yeah you're right yeah you're right this this album was this album was pretty much live live I mean mm -hmm. Punch and more stuff. This one was more raw. This one was more raw. This one, 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 or the multi tracks on it really fit, you know. It seems like it's well, yeah. yeah your songwriting has gone like wow. He's like, you guys have gotten tighter, you, you know, the, you know, the vocals are cleaner. And I, I got, I love the imagery in the vocals. Um, and it's just, it's a really it's a cool feel. It's a, you know, it, it's, it's the, probably not like it's not the hip hop generation's taste. It's kind of like my generation. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, I'm yeah. my yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've run into today. Everybody wants me to do like a two minute so called electronic track, but like I said, well, you know, original electronic music is like, yes or Genesis and that's like 10 minutes long <laughs> so I'm going back to like the original so I totally agree with where you guys are because like when I do electronic it's like well maybe why is where I would go you know but but a lot of where I'm gonna go is like Emerson Lake and Palmer Tangerine Dream that's the kind of thing you know you're like Funkadelic doing some 10 minute workout that's that's kind of like you know if you're a keyboard player I mean why would you just want to do a ten, two minute song I mean typically you want to you want to stretch out and I would think guitar players, you guys want to stretch out, you know, you, like the rock oriented form or even fusion jazz. I mean, we all, we always want to stretch out. We don't want to get locked in. Um, and that's really cool. I mean, it, these songs would must be a really awesome to play live when you get to play live. Um, it just kind of feels like it's like it was, it, it's, it's the kind of feel I like when I used to go see the dead or I used to go see the who or, or the almonds or, you know, I, I'd actually just sit there, you know, and I'd, I'd go to two nights in a row for the almonds to see the variation. And I can see you guys would probably be in that same kind of zone. You know, because like, like if I saw you one night, the next night you'd probably do a little different. Yes, yes, yeah. We're, 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 we're talking about it. Each take you. Each take you. Listen to and there's, and there's still a lot of problem there. So, um, yeah, we, yeah, we want to sound more, you know, like you mentioned, writing, you know, having more Yeah, it feels, this feels like, you know, I, I enjoyed that song very much, and I, I'm glad you guys, like, you put it on, out on Bandcamp, you know, which is probably one of the better artist, you know, centered ways to do things, because I think that's important. Maybe we can talk about that because, you know, you're living in the streaming world, you get playlisted, right? And people don't really listen to your whole project. And when you have a project like this, this, this album, the countless wasted days, isn't really something that's going to fit on a traditional 2021 playlist, you know, not that you can't get on like maybe our indie rock playlist, but, but it's like, you want to be able to go back, like when I used to pick up an album, I always talk about this, I go pick up like like Pink Floyd, Wish You Were Here. Mm -hmm. I want to listen to the whole thing. You know, I'm, I'm going to get the vinyl, I'm going to listen to it. This is the kind of album that you put down, you're going to listen to the whole thing. And I like the way you put it on YouTube, you kind of put it like a vinyl. Yeah. You know, yeah. the way the YouTube uh, version of the album is, you, you want to sit there and listen to the whole thing. You know, and that yeah, that's a yeah. cool strategy. It kind of, kind of... <laughs> Worked out that, worked out that way. Mean, 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 mean,
Yeah, so yeah, so we so we're like, so we're all right, like, all right, we'll put it out on YouTube, put it out, put it out on YouTube, and they'll just, they'll just, they'll just they'll upload, the, upload same the same day. Yeah. So, so we put it on, it on YouTube, and, and like you said, it just it, it, it makes it makes us start again, through, again, and then you know, it's just through. Yeah. So, so pretty much, pretty much everyone that listened to it was was through YouTube and played it all through. Fucking fucking forty. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not it's not it's not crazy long, but I guess for you know for the two minute crowd it's a little long, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not gonna they're not the ones you're going for anyway. You know, you're going for more like like the the music family. I mean, like I'm the guy that goes gets the vinyl, you know, to get it because I'm I'm like not that, you know, modern stuff doesn't sound good, but it's like like I like the experience. Mm-hmm. Of, of the vinyl experience and it's kind of like what your YouTube is the YouTube version of your album gives me that same feel it kind of gets me into the zone mm-hmm. and then that's what you want to feel you know it's like to me music is like a sound painting I think I've talked about this before mm-hmm. is like and you get drawn into it especially with longer form songs mm-hmm. you, you get to have your imagination as a music fan kind of take you where you want to go and it just is you know I think you have to have that kind of length in a song to really engage a, a music, you know, fan like somebody who's like more into like I want to, you know, put my headphones on and I'm gonna really listen to everything you're doing, and I'm not just using it so kind of going to jog, or I'm going to you know, like yeah. I'm doing because I mean, there's so many people who use music today, and I don't know if they're exactly music fans. They, they they use music for other purposes, but it's like it's not, yeah, yeah, they're not exactly like the hardcore fan. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're about 15 seconds. Yeah, 15 seconds in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I have a kitchen kitchen in there? It's got to have that beat. You got to have that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got that banger beat. I mean, if I want to go to Fruity Loops, yeah, if I want to go to Fruity Loops and have Fruity Loops all day, it's like, okay, I'll go get some General Mills or something, you know, but I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no disrespect. I mean, that, I mean, no, I get it. Working. Yeah, we have 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 we 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 yeah, I mean, if you, yeah, yeah, I mean, if you think about like the, in, in between, yeah, I mean, in between, like you listen to the almonds, right? The almonds were famous for these real long, drawn out songs because like, they're a jam band. But then they come up with a song like Melissa, you know. So once in a while, band is like, okay, we got to give the radio something. And I was watching some documentary on the almonds. They were like. And their and their managers are like, well, we love you. You guys are a live band, but we don't have anything we can give the radio. And then you know, Greg had Melissa, and he was sitting around with it forever. And then he finally, you know, after his brother died, he finally finished it. And then it was like, well, this is the one that actually kind of got them going. Besides Blue Sky, but that's even longer. But but it, it, it was the kind of radio thing they wanted, and it was still this long form jam band that found a way. To do that, and you, you, you know, there's examples of that. So, if you guys like consciously thought, like in, you know, and I, that, that you one day you want to want to tr- do a song like that, or you just like, well, we're gonna do what we want to do. Um, um, no, no, we did that, and that's why we did on there. Um, like, like less than less than two minutes long. Was the was the one who did Trini Royale? Me and Nick were talking. I'm like. Pop song. So, so we we do we do we think of those things kind of not to contradict, not to contradict what we were saying, but, but mm. I was like, I was like we need to get something, something that could be break with a friendly and catch mm. yeah. um, so that's so why that's we why we did that we did the create contrast. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's what's good about the album format, can you deeper into it. You know, you you could start it off with maybe a long form song and then buried in it are songs that or maybe the the, the radio friendly song, but you got to you got to discover it, you know. Yeah, and that's the, that's the whole process. It's like a it's a full thought, you know. When you have an album, it's a full 
picture of a band and you know what i like is the variation that the album lets you do because you can put stuff on an album that's not not meant to be a hit but it's meant to be part of a cohesive idea that, of, that. of that record whether it's a concept or not but like even non-concept albums have a structure where that that song fits in that collection of songs so when you were putting these songs together like you said you some of these songs are older like so did you consciously try to find songs that were going to fit the theme of like countless wasted days because you have that name checked in the first song um but is that like something that you wanted to uh have that feel through the whole record is like or you know which ones would work Yeah. Well, I think that's the core of a songwriter. Like you write something that's relatable, but it's always kind of personal. Like singer songwriters, mm -hmm. you take something out of your personal life and you're able to convey it in such a way. And it has maybe a different meaning to you than your fans, but it's relatable. It's like the feeling is relatable and maybe it's not exactly. So your fan interprets it. In, in a way that represents something in their life like when you listen to music it's like art you know you interpret something you get an emotion out of it and you can pick up on the feeling that the songwriter is conveying and it triggers a memory and triggers a feeling and that's what's really cool about music is because they get you don't know what feelings that's triggering in your fans but if they're digging it it's re it relayed you know so it's, even though it might have been deeply personal to you it still relate in a way that was translatable and i think that's mm -hmm. that's what's really cool about music when it's deep you know deep why why i like singer songwriters rather than um you know being able to talk to people who actually wrote their music um mm -hmm. and, and it wasn't just like not that, that the whole thing i mean motown had the, all these great singers singing all these other people's songs and that that can work but i've always had the kind of a uh, an eye on everybody i interview tends to be not just the singer, but the, uh, the actual writer of the song they wrote. <laughs> yeah, and you, yeah, know, you know, we're in the past, you know, you know, I could never been, never been different in the music. You have a lot, have of, a lot artists of artists that make the next, make the next hit. hit. You know, uh, uh, and that might have killed a lot of people, most of the general, most of the general public. public. But I think but there's, I think a, there's a, a, a side of that, side of that where that that one one song and genuine that's that's where we fall into that when you hear when you hear music that you know our music is our music is imperfect we're all like right no right no sometimes whatever whatever but on it on it well you're you're in a different you're not like in that punk aesthetic you're not like like the clash or 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 like you know no that's cool because i think one cool thing is like What's interesting is that you've got this kind of roots rock, uh, you know, kind of horn tradition that is a little bit more, um, you know, uh, constructed. It's, you have song construction, you know, with not exactly music theory, but I mean, you've got a little deeper than what, you know, somebody was doing like a punk rock band like the Ramones or something. It's, there's an honesty in that kind of punk aesthetic, but there's also an honesty in the kind of construction you guys have, which is a little bit you know, more thought maybe going into or maybe you just feel naturally about it. But I, I, I love all that type of stuff. I, I mean, I'm a big fan of hip hop and I like like the hip hop comes from a guy like like Earl Sweatshirt or something or, or an MF Doom. 
that you know that's when I see somebody really doing something interesting. Um, um, but then the jam bands, like I said, I've always loved jam bands. I've always loved bands that that introduce horns. Because uh, I started on like clarinet and sax, and then I couldn't figure out how to write like on on a clarinet, so I, w I switched the boards. Because <laughs> that, that that was trying to bring my winds back into my music, because I think it would be cool. But um, yeah, it's just like I think it's just the idea of honesty, like you were talking about, is um is really core in, in the singer songwriter area in, in bands that do it themselves and you know do it yourself type of thing going on today and there's a lot of really cool stuff going in, on in this scene you know whether you're in the techno or side trance or you know i talk to all different types of people but they're all doing it themselves they're all, they're not on big labels uh and i think that's where the honesty in the music is is like okay you guys are passionate about what you do enough to want to do it yourself and and really put something that's like heartfelt out and I think that's that's why we do these programs to give give the, give you know a place for you guys to be heard. So for this album, because you can't like tour on it yet, are you guys able to like future plan? anything because you know now the vaccines are coming and people are saying maybe by the summer venues are opening up are you guys seeing any opportunities to tour with this record yeah yeah we actually have our show coming up in a few weeks um um chicago's, chicago's kind of interesting there's some places there's some places that are open we're a little bit more than stuff where some people have you know you know you know you wear you wear a mask and all that and our early summer, early summer, it was actually, so, so we're, we're fortunate enough to have a lot of money. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're fortunate enough to have, to have, to have it. Oh, that's cool. Because, like, it, it yeah. feels like, you know, it, like, I, it was really interesting for me, you know, because I'm, I'm a musician as well, you know, but uh, I got a booking agent like a month before the pandemic came in and locked everybody down. And I, I actually had this agent in like London that was trying to get me to like Berlin and to, you know, Sweden and all these places. And then it's like, oh, we're not taking any Americans. You can't leave. You can't go. Cause, so, so then it's like, I've been totally like, do okay, what is it? I'll just double down on podcasting and writing music and doing what I do. But um, yeah, I think it's going to start opening again. I'm starting to get some inquiries, but um yeah, it's just, it's just finally it's getting some light at the end of the tunnel for a lot of artists who've been like, you know, I did a lot of venues have been like pushed to the edge. You know, some venues oh, like oh, in places yeah. like, yeah. In the Northeast, I mean, their venues are gone. And I don't know yeah. how they're going to come back, but it's like, you know, we got less places to play. And um, yeah, it's just a hard thing. But, you know, I think people have just taken this time to write. Um, but like, let me get back into the album. So we played the first track. Um, what what's your favorite track to play on this record? Like as a band, if you're gonna play it something live, which track is the one that you like to actually play live? I think that's kind of like, like asking, like, like which one's your, which one's your favorite kid? kid? I mean, okay. my mom, my mom can answer that, <laughs> <laughs> but but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I I enjoy I enjoy it all. all. And kind of, and kind of being in band, I kind of, I kind of refuse. I don't like. I don't like. If I don't like, it's like, okay. What's that place? What's that place? Yeah. I don't know, Mr. I don't know, Mr. Miserable. Got a vibe. Got a vibe. Fun, fun. Yeah. 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 I like. I like fun. Yeah. Got a lot of improv. Yeah, it's hard for, you know, it's like, it's like you write so many songs as a songwriter and somebody asks you, what's your favorite song? And you, know, you, you got like hundreds of songs, but it's like a lot of, you know, people always are like, which whatever song the fans like the most. And, but it's like, to me, it's like, it's usually like, what's well, the song I actually like, <laughs> you know, but, but yeah. you know, my yeah. fans might like this one, but then like the one I like to play is the one nobody plays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Well, 
you know, but it's one of those things better, better than, you know, you know, trying to try to you know, every please everybody, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, and that that's what we got to do from the please a specific, please a specific people, people mm. we try to play, play everyone like, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why, and that's why, you know, too, we wanted to, we wanted to have that short stuff. Okay, okay, you know, not everyone wants to do it. Yeah, 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 so you gotta have something. Yeah, so you throw that one on and it's kept short, so then it kind of makes it play it over again. Over again right? Yeah, wait, well, that's, that's just the whole nature you know all since the music business started is like like where's where's the hook where's the beat you know and it, 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 no matter what genre like what is the one that's gonna get people like you know it's, oh it's the memorable ones the one that people like are gonna want to go back to it's kind of like you know the prince's curse on purple rain is like he really didn't like to play that that much anymore if, yeah. if, you know, it, he had so much other work that was going in so many other directions, but the hardcore fans always want to hear that. Mm-hmm. And there was a period like when he changed his name, they, he like refused to play. It. He just wouldn't play it. You know, he just went around. And he's like, I'm not playing it at all. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's common. There's a lot of bands. Didn't want to play. Didn't want to play. Sounds like he's like, yeah. Kurt ball. got sick of that. Yeah, yeah that's my word. That's my word. Like, you know, like you know, that. I guess. Like radio. Yeah. You hardly ever hear him play that anymore. Yeah, no. They hardly ever play that song again. I mean, I love Radiohead. I love. What, I like what they do. They, I mean, sometimes they go on stage and they're like, I'm an analog geek, right? So I go. They, they go up on stage with all these Euroracks and they're noodling on the, all this esoteric stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I, that's what I want. And then somebody's yelling, like, I want to hear Creep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, they're, they're like, like that's what I mean. <laughs> everybody, everybody, all what I mean, yeah. what I mean, um, um, you know, we, you know, we, 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 I think, I think that you, you, you a crowd, a crowd, um, um, you know, you know, I've, I've seen, seen bands, bands that just sing, sing, or, you know, you know, don't change, don't change, don't change it up. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're stuck, on, stuck on their set list. <laughs> Do you guys like I, one thing I liked what Dylan used to do is like Dylan had like alternate lyrics to like all his songs, right? So I would go see a Dylan and he was doing his um blood on a tr- Well, he maybe forgotten, but, but I, I, I have all I have all the bootlegs, so there's some of them I kinda knew. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah. it's like so he would go and do blood on the tracks and he had like multiple versions of Idiot Wind. Mm-hmm. They have different lyrics. Mm-hmm. And I've and I've had, I have like the boots of them. And then one time I actually saw him doing it and he actually pulled the lyrics from one of the boots. That oh, wow. He actually ran the, the like a, a totally different like aspect of the storyline. Because all his songs are like stories and he had different variations on what was going to be the character, what they were doing. Mm-hmm. And he, he ran a whole different like set of, uh, of lyrics. And I just think that's kind of interesting. Like some, sometimes, you know, you write a song, you got multiple versions of the song. And then it's like, okay, well, if I go out tonight, I'm going to actually try the original demo because I'm kind of feeling that, and I'm just going to do the lyrics from that rather than the one that everybody knows. Do you ever, like, go like that, or do you just kind of go with whatever you feel? We don't. We don't. We don't. We don't. We We try to change things up. Not only for the crowd, but for ourselves. We just play the same all the time. Go away. Go away. You know, Change up all the jam sections. Um, um, you know, so we just, 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 we just,
Got gotcha. Yeah, that's what I'm because yeah, there's a whole thing today we're kind of like you don't want you know it's not it's not exactly a Millie Vanilli situation. <laughs> if you remember, like these guys, those are the guys that got caught with their um, tape got stuck uh, and, they were, and they were lip syncing and they weren't even really singing. They're like their tape got stuck because they were more like dancers that happened to sing. And then they got stuck in the. I can understand. Okay, if you're really a dancer, that happens to sing, and then you do this whole routine. I can understand the athletics, the athleticism of having to dance and sing and actually have it sound good. I can see why you might lip sync. But but the whole thing today with people who have so many backing tracks, they're like locked into the groove, and they can't change their song, and so they kind of play the same way, the same set list every night because it's coming off their daw. And they're doing like Ableton Live, and they're like stuck in that, and they won't don't deviate from it. And it's somewhat to me, it's kind of like if I wanted to hear the record, I, w I would just hear the record. I wouldn't go to the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, how, that's how, I how I feel. I mean, I mean, I mean again, more friends and friends than the people like people like seeing DJs or whatever. Um, and like you're saying, like you're saying, saying like, I'm like, like I understand, like, I understand it. I was, I was always kind of, kind of like, like Michael Jackson. Yeah. You know, we'd, 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 we'd pretty much always come back and crack. Which kind of which sucks. Which kind of sucks. Yeah. I would, I would, I would kind of rather hear Michael King than yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather have some mistakes. You know, that's what I liked about Prince is like he he could do the dance and he could do the stagecraft, but uh -huh. he actually uh -huh. was like, you know, he would actually do it. And so whether or not it came out perfect, he didn't exactly care because he'd just go with it. And so it proves that you could you could be this big pop star and not have to lip sync the song or, or stay totally on it. He would he, he never played Kiss like the record. He right. never played right. it. He always would change it because it's like the way the record was was like this point in time experiment and then he never tried to replicate it. Uh, even like Dove's Cry, he never really played those tracks exactly like the record because he's like, you know, that's, was, that's the record version. Yeah, um, yeah. The way I'm going to do it live is different. <laughs> more of a way of like, you know, playing play guitar. Well, his live shows, shows were definitely a bit more, bit more on the music side. 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 Like Michael, like was, Michael like, was like a big show. Yeah, show. he's a performer. He's more of a yeah, performer. Yeah, performer. And that's, and that's cool, too. I, I, I think he's doing good when coming out of a cool show. But, um, you know, like, like, really like, like, I like how Jack White. Yeah, Jack White. Like, he doesn't come out with just, he doesn't come out with just, he doesn't come out with, like, a perfect, like, you know, you know, he doesn't want to get that, right? Yeah, yeah. He wants to come out and put on a rock show. He wants to go wrong. He wants to go wrong. He wants to make mistakes. He wants to make mistakes. He wants to make mistakes. Make mistakes. Yeah. He's got to, you know, struggle with the, Plug some men, plug that imperfection. Yeah, it's like watching the replacements or the clash, you know. You watch like you watch the Sex Pistols or you watch a band like Joy Division, you know, when they first were out there. It's the kind of raw nature of seeing a band that, that it's like, okay, to me, it's like the, the whole, like, uh, there, there's actually some beauty. You know, I used to watch, like, I was watching all these um, clips of like Neil Young and the Stray Gators. Like and Neil Young and Crazy Horse in like seventy two and seventy four, and that's kind of like the heart of like Neil could go to Nashville and do something real tight, and then he get with the he get with um, Crazy Horse and he's like the whole point of Crazy Horse is like I want to take it to the ditch. That's what he said. He's like I want to actually go into dissonance, go into not being perfect key, perfect tone, and and have that kind of Kurt Cobain honesty. You know, he was like the kind of grandfather of grunge because he, he could do it clean. He could do it real perfect. He could do that Crosby, Stills, Nash kind of voice if he wanted to. But if he wanted to be like heavy and punky and low off kilter, he'd do something like Tonight's the Night. And that, that to me is like that is like the brilliance. I, I always I, mean, I can appreciate his really high quality singing voice that he can do these awesome harmonies but i do like when he goes out there and just like kills it you know? yeah, no, I, yeah no, absolutely. a lot of our a lot sound of our sound too. Too. Um, um, really pretty, really pretty. Well, thought well, thought out. Out. 
you know, nice, you know, nice and clean. Be like, be like, be like get raw, get and, raw, and yeah, raucous. You know, that kind of grunge thing. You know, they, I think in every age you have to come back to that. Cause you know, you had you you had like punk, and then you got new wave, new romantic, and then you had the glam rock bands, and then Kurt Cobain was like a repudiation of that a little bit. Like, let's bring some raw power back, and then you got Nirvana and Pearl Jam and Stone Temple Pilots and all those bands brought back, you know, this this kind of like raw. And I think every age has to have the people to cut through and say, you know what, we got to get rid of all this other stuff and kind of get back to the elemental parts of music which are more honest you know it's, it's not that i i don't unappreciate somebody like a david bowie i mean bowie was like like a really genius in that he could do that theater and he could have all this stage presence and all these characters and stuff but it still felt authentic and then it's like you, you don't always get somebody like a bowie who actually figures out how to bridge that in the right way you know in, in a way that still feel honest even though it's just all this other stuff on it it felt like okay well he really believes in what he's doing and so it felt like like it, it wasn't just a show you know he actually believes he's ziggy he yeah, believes yeah. he's a lad insane you know he actually got into it like an actor mm-hmm. so i mean yeah, I mean, that's the, he's a big influence on the game. I mean, Brian Eno, I, I always think about him as being a keyboard player. I'm always thinking about like what Eno and him did in the Berlin, like, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff, the experimental stuff. But, um, yeah, you guys, like, so what? what's the next step beyond the countless wasted days? Are you going to really just focus on pushing this project or are you already thinking about like the next one? No, we're no, still, we're still yeah, with you guys on this one. Um, um, just really, just getting, really it getting it out. We didn't really, we didn't push, really push her on. First record, put it out, put it out, right? But, but this one, this one you, we're really proud, really proud of it. We want, want, like, want as many people to hear it. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I think now, think now we're just, just in live. In live. Mm-hmm. Want to get back, want to get back at it now? Well, you got two albums worth of material to play, um, plus wherever you know backlog you have. So when you go to do a show, are you, you going to focus more on this record because that's where you are, where your head's at, or you pull some stuff from the other record? I think, I think we'll, we'll probably be focusing on this, on one. this one. Mostly from this one. Mostly from this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, what one to one to one. What you hear on the record? New stuff. New stuff. Uh, uh, we played a lot of the stuff on the first. A lot. A lot. We played, we played a lot of the stuff on the first. A lot. A lot. We played it before. We played it before. And after. So, so we're trying. We're trying to just kind of catalog. Catalog. Just catalog. Catalog. Music. Um. Because yeah, because yeah, we got the album. The album. Plus maybe plus a maybe a couple more. Yeah. So, I mean, so, I mean, one, one, you know, we want to grow. We want to grow. We want to have. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I mean, because what, what, what I like about touring is a lot of times when I do shows, when I would go to New York and Boston, it would always like live playing would trigger me to write new songs. You know, the the, the live experience is like that's when I, I mean I'd be playing my set list, but out of the set list i might have found some groove i did you know as part of the show and it's hey that's an idea and i kind of triggered a lot of bands are kind of famous for taking their tours and actually having that drive a whole project do you guys like thinking like a tape in your stuff so you can capture what you do on stage do you guys do that nick records records it on on his phone yeah. But yeah, we'll, 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 yeah. we'll kind of we'll kind of take my show. Mm-hmm. You know, you like a TV show. Um, show. Um, um, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of like fan of like playing. So I so try I try to move well. Well, I agree. This might, this might be younger people. people. We're going to be, 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 be,
heavy music. Heavy music. Oh, there's going to be a little bit of older crowd here. Maybe do it a little, do it a little light. Yeah, yeah. So you get more, more jazzy. Like you could go more fusion with an older crowd. You can maybe pump it up and get a little harder edged. You know, you know, t knock the tempo up. If you see a bunch of young people, they they want to get into like head knocking or like more more interaction. Where the older crowd, you might like my age, we're like, okay, well, I can, I, I actually like it. You guys go twenty minutes on one song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I actually, I, I'm glad into that. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes when the song, when the song is Mr. 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 Heavy, so, so I personally I assume, assume that older older people might like people might like it. Head, but you know, but you know, we have an older, older band. band. That's her favorite, favorite song. Yeah, well, some of us older people, we, we, we were in the Zeppelin and in the Hendrix, so we can get pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like you got to, that's the cool thing about live playing is you read the crowd. You know, you can kind of feel when something's hitting, when it's not hitting, and you can, you know, make it, make it, make an adjustment. And that's, that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, something live. Right, okay. Yeah, I was watching this documentary on Frank Zappa and he was like famous for like taping all the mothers intervention and all his like uh concerts. He's like he have all these wife was saying he had all these reels of like every concert he ever did, right? Oh, and, 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 and he would just go through them, and then he's like, "Well, here's a song, here's a song," and he would take take a bit from one reel, from another one, and something from the studio, and then he actually start making all these new projects. And his wife was saying, "Well, he's got all these projects all over the floor," and he's just like cutting and splicing things. And he's like, "Yeah, that's that's a song, that's an idea, that's." And they'd start working on two things at once. Because he was, you know, he's a total crazy genius. But I just, I think it's cool, you know, when you're a band to kind of have your, your, your archive of what you've been doing. And you, you, once in a while, you review it and then say, hey, maybe something we did two years ago didn't work, but now we're right where we are in our headspace. Now, now we can get it to work, you know. Oh yeah. And yeah it's, it's just cool to kind of go through you know your 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 own personal like uh library you know I, i'm always going back and, and looking at stuff that i did or i did, thought it didn't work I mean, it, it, sometimes this is quick like this eq in it different you know running my stuff and it's suddenly saying i ran it through this way and now if i change it it significantly change and like oh now i'm going to overdub something on top of it and change it and and then boom i'm in i'm like off into another world like my modular sense that could get me kind of going crazy but um yeah so you guys um what did you um what do you guys feel about what's going on in terms of like um i think we talked about before like streaming versus like physical like vinyl and tape are you guys thinking of uh, maybe making a vinyl or a tape for this project or because the way streaming is, you know, way artists are compensated. Are you guys thinking about like merch and stuff to go with this project? Yeah, so, yeah, so we have some shirts, shirts out, out that we already have that are available. We're, we're in the we're in the maze made. We're gonna have we're gonna have those on the phone in a few weeks. Cool. We'll be selling all that in the um, um, and um and they'll be available that are shared shows. Um, um I personally, I personally think, think that it's good to it's have good to have both well, 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 streaming and yeah. Yeah. Vinyl. Yeah. Yeah. We are missing this one on vinyl. It's such a it's such a process. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a while. I mean, I was trying. I'm. I'm. I'm still working on a project, but I'm kind of too crazy. It's like I wanted to do like a three vinyl record, cause I got this like I got this big like double record that I wanted to put on vinyl because I thought 
that like if I put all this stuff with the lyric sheet and I had this artist that I was working with in Germany, this guy named Chernobello, and he had done all this really like MC Escher type psychedelic work that's all black and white. So was, if you've seen my work, I do a lot of psychedelic weird stuff. And I actually yeah, worked, yeah. With, worked with this guy, Chernobello, and we had all this stuff. And, and we have this, we've still been working on this project. It's just, it's just kind of crazy. And I got to self-fund it. And um, the pandemic came, so it's like it's on the shelf and I'm still working on it. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm a big, big fan of like physical um, um, items for your fans. Because I think that, that connects with the audience could win a, you know, even if you have a t-shirt, you have a poster, you have a button, you got a cassette, you know, your CD, that it has a, a way to pull your fan in and get them to kind of get into your brand. Not that you're selling like, like, like a Coca-Cola, but you're, you're selling your band. You're trying to get people to get into you, you know, and uh, I think that gives a, a way to really pull somebody in when you have stuff like that. Yes, yes, yeah, so it depends on the ball of that. Like you said, you know, you had a great dream. And that's kind of what we're doing, too. You know, watch, we got the album. This is cool. Yeah, one was this, right? No, no. This was this. Plan that was tied to the idea of the wasted days, and I, I like that you guys had that theme, and I saw it, you know, on on the Instagram, which is like I think is like the Instagram is probably like the best like social media site for musicians. I mean, it's where I get all my guests from <laughs> for the last two years. I've underestimated the Instagram because I'm realizing more and more that a lot of our connection. Coming, coming from Instagram, and then, and then as you mentioned before, we're not Bandcamp. Yeah, I mean the merchandising opportunities on Bandcamp for like you know putting together like CDs and T-shirts is just really good, and it just has a better you know artist compensation model yeah, than yeah. than some of these other places. Oh, um, oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah, so it's like, you know, you, you want to get, you know, not, not that it's all about the money, but it's like, it's it's about fairness. It's just about, like, a, being able to get something to the fan at a reasonable rate that's not going to yeah. kill you, you know. And it's a little more, 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 like you were talking, like about, talking about before, Spotify, Spotify would, it might just, it might just shuffle your stuff or throw it on a board. Um, um, it kind of has, has, has doubt, doubt right to start and start to get track more of yeah, I just, the, yeah, I think it's just physically looking at a lyric sheet or looking at the artwork. I mean, I grew up like... That's how it's supposed, how it's supposed, to, be. supposed to be. Yeah, I mean, I grew up yeah, picking up really like a Led Zeppelin record and, yeah, and yeah. taking a spinning wheel and spinning it around and looking at the little cutouts. And, yeah, Led Zeppelin. Yeah, I mean, I actually yeah. picked that up. Right, we, my right. brother, we went to like a mall and actually in the 70s picked that up. And we were like... This is so uh, cool. Yeah, and then yeah, we were yeah. like, they, yeah. <laughs> we were just like sat down in the basement. And we we're like, this is it. This is the, 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 we yeah. got all our friends to come over and we're kind of you know doing what we do in a basement. But um, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, it's just that that type of headspace that yeah, we yeah. you know we would sit there and we really appreciated like Floyd and Zepp mm -hmm. and you know all the all those big bands because it was like. My parents didn't appreciate it, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. At time, I, mean, I mean, I mean, I think, I think the decade, the decade of pop. Or I'm sorry, or I'm sorry. Yeah, like, yeah, like the best, the best music, music and like, and like, 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 like an, album an album was an adventure. adventure. You know, you know, I can imagine, imagine how it was back in the days where, you know, you go, you go to the record, you get a record, you go to the bass, and all your friends, and all the tunes, and all right, all right. We still kind of do that, you know? Yeah. Stuff, stuff, like, like, well, I oh, see, it, yeah, I mean, I, my, my daughter, she's 20, and, and her friends are all into vinyl. And they're, like, really yeah. into, like, a lot of, like, sub-pop underground bands and picking up the vinyl and getting the T-shirts. My daughter, like, I, you know, I kind of put it into her head that, like, you know, 
Don't just stream the band you love. If you love a band, she'll buy the shirt, she'll buy the buttons, she'll buy the yeah. Yeah. whatever they're doing, right? And she's totally like into it. And she got a vinyl player, and now she's like, okay, I want a hi-fi stereo, kind of like what you had in the '70s. And it's like, well, you know, what did you find? <laughs> she showed me something that was like, really? <laughs> she was like, took this up to like three thousand dollar machine. And I'm like, okay, I guess you're really into it. It's like you're that much oh, into man. it, and I said, I guess you are. It's like, okay. Um, she wants the tube amps and like all, really all this really crazy, but she's into it. And I said, well, you know, if you're into it that much and you really like it and you're building up your collections, okay, fine. You, you're a good student. You do it getting straight A's. Okay, fine. Um, because like, you're cool. You're doing what you're supposed to do. So, but I just thought it was cool that she thought that it's important to actually support the band that she likes, you know, so she actually does it, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. Back to, back to like Jack White. Jack White. He says, he says, you know, you don't have that piece, have that piece of music. music. You go and you throw it at, you know, vinyl. You know, vinyl. Just, just, you know, you got you know, it. It's, it's a real, real, real thing. I mean, Jack, Jack, Jack White's that good reason, reason, reason of why, you know, vinyl. vinyl. Yeah, the third man. I mean, he brought it back. I mean, he's got his third man operation in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's like, you know, being an archivist with all this old stuff and then put new stuff out and yeah he's always yeah, finding them in new ways yeah he's using vinyl and exciting, exciting stuff, stuff. I, 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 take I, I take a lot after that new research about freedom freedom marketing making things new exciting and exciting again yeah 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 and you know that's no, why no, we can have all this new party music oh my god that new artist I like where we had all of our music and close friends and listen to the album listen to the album this is really nice no, no, and well, and I think no. music people forget music is about like community. Like, yeah. I think, like, I grew up with the Woodstock generation. I mean, I went to the second Woodstock, I didn't get to go to the first one. I'm totally enamored. I, I was the generation that was so enamored with it that we went and had the second one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, um, so, so, but it, the whole idea is this you know, you think about the deadheads, you think about like the, the guys who followed the who and, 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 and people who are really. The five guys who follow the Allman Brothers, and I was one of those guys following the Allman Brothers wherever they went. But um, it was this whole thing that it's like it's a scene, you know, it's it's a community, and it's like a it's a way of life, you know. And it's like like music isn't just like oh, it's just a playlist, and I got twenty different bands that don't aren't connected, and I don't even know who, anything other than their one song. Right. Right. And yeah, then that's that how, that's how, yeah, again, it's that 15 second, second catchy song, song, whatever. whatever. Like, I don't even I don't listen to this person's whole album, 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 but I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like, the community, community, community the part, part of the, the, is what is draws, what draws, 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 you know, it was because I saw the, I saw the, listening to it, and then the community was forming, and the around it, around it, was like, it was so welcoming, so welcoming, so cool, and we try to, we try to, we, yeah, I think what's interesting today is you do see it coming back, like in, in, in the kind of music I'm into, right, the Eurorack, analog synth type of thing, we have whole communities of guys that do shows that do these really esoteric, like, yes, Genesis type of shows, and we're just, you know, we're doing 20 minute long songs, and we're like deep into our modes and doing all this stuff, and but there's a whole scene that's into that, there's a whole scene that's like, okay, I've got a Moog, to you know um you know i've got you know this, this like a rhodes piano and i got a fair child i mean fair, fair light or something and people are just like really into those old instruments and they're into the modular stuff and there's this whole scene and it's, it's this scene you know I, i've run into artists you know through online in, in, in the netherlands in australia and berlin in spain that are really hardcore into deep electronic music. And in and and that scene, they're very passionate about what they're into. And they want to hear everybody's project. And everybody's like kind of working with each other. It's kind of like, you know, a hippie scene. You know, it's a different type of scene. But, you know, it's just cool to see. Like in Chicago, do you guys have a scene of other bands like yourselves that kind of, kind of support each other, like a collective? Yeah, totally. yeah, totally. Yeah, we got, yeah, a, lot we got of, a lot of. Better than other better than other bands. You know, we'll put each other on each other. You know, you know, create each other. Um, you know, a lot of people. 
overlapping. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. We can't yeah. 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 create a lot of the same and yeah, we can create that community and say, like, I'll say, like, oh, you're close, 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 yeah, because it's kind of like the story of Sub Pop. You know, if you think about the whole Sub Pop thing, it, the Nirvana came out of, it was just underground and it suddenly blew up, you know. Yeah, and, all the, and, all and, the metal bands. Yeah, it's like even like the metal band scene in L.A. You know, with all the all the hair bands that kind of blew up and that was the scene. Like from time to time you get these scenes that happen where they, you get these fun foundational bands and then they all kind of align around them. And you get like, you know, you get record labels like IRS and Sub Pop and they have like this kind of feel for that type of, you know, genre. So each genre gets like like labels associated with them or they get mm -hmm. scenes, you know, today less label. It's more like everybody's in a collective and the collective yeah, thing, I yeah. think, is what's really pushing the music. And I think it's going to be the new the new model for the future is really do it yourself, but then align with other people with the same attitude. And then, you know, then also align with filmmakers and artists and, you know, entrepreneurs who, who can, you know, create other things to go with your work. And then that creates like the whole new scene. And that's kind of what we're trying to, you know, with this podcast, we're, we've been kind of pushing an idea for the future that every single band that's ever been on this podcast that we want to create some kind of like collective event whether it's online or whether it's like physically somewhere, find a way to get a bunch of the bands we've talked to and do a show. And, and it's, that, it's like, a, they, to, to me, it's, it makes sense because like we, this is a community within this podcast. So then if we take all, our, all of our guests with all these diverse, it would be like a big festival. And we could like, you know, we could do an online version of it. If we can't get it into a real version and try to get some funding for that. But yeah, we're we're working, seeing if we can put something together for the future, uh, and so we think that because we feel that that's what music needs. We need to have more community, you know, to do that. So I'm glad I, I had you guys on this program. This this is like streaming live on my Facebook. But we will save it. It's gonna save there, and then we're gonna convert it to Anchor in our old form, where it'll go out as um, an audio only on all the platforms we're on there like spotify and apple podcast and all that so we'll send you that once that's ready but this is immediately on my on on the facebook you see streaming on below and then we're going to push it to youtube as well and it's got your link on it permanently so people will see that when they see the video so that's that's cool and uh yeah we're glad to talk to you guys when do you guys have a new project or have something else you want to get into um uh, we want to like save the rest of the records if we don't just play it, but we wanted to give people a picture of it, you know, uh, w which what we did. And uh, we thank you for being on our program. Hey, no problem. Hey, no problem. Hey, no problem. Hey, it's great talking to you. Talk to you. Uh, thank you. Have a good night. You too, man. You too, man.